Okay guys, welcome to the video. Uh, this video we're going to talk about question number two from 2018, paper one. Uh, we've already gone through question number one, which is about mitosis. So just see the previous video for that one. Okay, so question two is about osmosis in cubes of potato tissue, and it tells us that at the top there. Now, anytime we get a question about osmosis, we certainly want to be thinking about water potential and water potential gradients. So we know water is going to move down a water potential gradients into or out of the cell, okay, across that partially permeable membrane. The scientist has then cut two cubes of potato tissue, and both cubes initially had sides of 35 millimeters in length. So if we have a cube and we know the length of one side, we can actually work out two things. We can work out the surface area, and of course there's six sides to a cube. And we can also work out the volume, which is the width times the length times the depth. So we're going to start to think about surface area to volume ratio here. Now this is actually required practical number three. So you guys probably will have done this, or you might do it this year. And we're going to be looking at, as the, the data demonstrates in the graph below, the loss of mass of these cubes of potato tissue. So if we then circle a bit more of the information, it tells us the scientists put one cube into a concentrated sucrose solution. Now we might want to be thinking that that sucrose solution is going to have quite a negative water potential if it's fairly concentrated. And the scientist then in a second experiment, he cuts one of the cubes into eight equal size smaller cubes and then put them into sucrose solution of the same concentration as the original experiment. So we're going to take a 35 millimeter length cube and we're going to cut that into eight smaller cubes and place them into the same uh, concentrated solution. Now, if we have a look at the data that we're presented with on the graph, then we can see on the y axis going up to the left, that's the total mass in grams of either A, which is the large cube of potato tissue, or B, the collective eight smaller cubes that was placed into the same concentration. And the scientist has measured the loss of mass in grams from zero to 160 minutes. Now, the first thing we're going to notice is that actually for experiment A and B, the starting mass of either the large cube or the eight smaller cubes combined is 62 grams. So it's going to start at the same uh, grams or the same total mass. Now, if we look at the key, which we're always going to do, uh, we can see experiment A is the large cube, and we know the sides here are 35 millimeters. And the data for experiment B will be the eight smaller cubes. So here we've got eight smaller cubes. If we added all these volumes together, obviously we'd get the volume of the bigger cube because that's the one that we, we cut originally. And we know that if we've got eight smaller cubes, then anything that's a smaller size will actually have a larger surface area to volume ratio. So we've got eight smaller cubes with collectively a larger surface area to volume ratio. That means actually that it's going to be a faster rate of osmosis of water uh, out of the potato tissue across those partially permeable cell membranes. And therefore, over the course of 160 minutes, there's going to be a greater loss of total mass as water leaves the potato uh, tissue, uh, more so from the smaller cubes. So in question 2.1, it asked us to describe the method the student would have used to obtain the results in the graph in figure three. And really importantly, uh, it asked us to start describing the method after all of the cubes of potato have actually been cut. So any ideas about cutting the 35 millimeter cube into eight equal size cubes is not necessary here. We want after the method after this has already been done. But it also asks us to consider variables that the scientists should have controlled during this part of the experiment. So we want three marks and we want three key ideas. So if we start looking at the marks scheme then. Any method to ensure all the cut surfaces of the eight cubes once placed in the sucrose solution are exposed to that solution. So this might be to gently shake the solution at regular intervals. And that's really important to ensure that the eight smaller cubes do not stick together and that every surface is being bathed by the solution. Second mark point then is some method of controlling the temperature. 
So what you probably would do is you'd have your sucrose solution in a test tube. You place that in a thermostable water bath set at a certain degree Celsius. And then once the solution had reached the correct temperature, you then place the eight cubes into that solution and gently shake them during the course of the 160 minutes, like we said in part point one. Part point three, uh, a method, described method of drying the cubes before measuring. So that might be to pack dry the cubes at certain time intervals once you've removed them from the sucrose solution. That ensures that very little or no more osmosis will occur if you've removed any excess solution from the surface of the cubes once you remove them from that solution. And lastly, measure the mass of the cubes once they've been removed from the sucrose and patted dry at stated time intervals. So this might be, for example, uh, every five minutes. So you might have multiple tubes set up. You might have zero to five minutes, zero to 10 minutes, zero to 15 minutes, etc. And then we're going to be able to plot the data every five minutes up to 160 minutes. So question 2.2 asks us to work out uh, the rate of osmosis per millimetre squared per minute for A and B. But we do need to annotate the information we're provided with because it says the rate of osmosis uh, between 0 and 40 minutes uh, on the graph. And it tells us that that rate of, of loss in grams is faster in B with eight small cubes compared to A. And that's maybe what we'd expect, knowing that the smaller cubes collectively have a larger surface area to volume ratio. So the rate of water loss by osmosis is faster. And really importantly, rate of osmosis per millimeter squared per minute. So if we go back to the data, uh, we're going to have to use a ruler and be very careful with our measurements that we take off the graph. So remember, this is the bigger cube in experiment A with a size of 35 millimeters. We're going to cut that into eight smaller cubes. Now, this is the key here that if one side is 35 millimeters and then you divide this into eight equal size smaller cubes, each side will then be 17.5 millimeters. So if you take the blue line at the top, I'll just highlight that in yellow, this one here in yellow. Hopefully you guys can see if you halve that, that will be 17.5 millimeters. So knowing each side, we can then work out the surface area of one side, that's just 35 times 35 at the top, and then you'll times that by six to get the total surface area. Now the smaller cubes in red at the bottom, one side is 17.5 millimeters, so you go 17.5 times 17.5, and that will give you the surface area of one side, times it by six, and that will give you the surface area of one cube, and then you times that by eight because you've got eight small cubes. So if we have a look at the data then, we, we know that the starting mass or total mass is 62 grams for experiment A and B. And the question asks us to work out the loss of mass after 40 minutes. So we're going to go from 62 all the way down to 57. And that's for the black curve for A at 40 minutes. So it's between 0 and 40 minutes here at the bottom look. Now, that's a loss of five grams in 40 minutes, and that's per 7,350 millimeters squared, which is the surface area of that large cube in experiment A. Now, if we actually do the same thing for experiment B, we're gonna see that if we draw a line going down at 40 minutes, actually the total mass is 53 grams. So 62 minus 53 is nine. So for experiment B, there's going to be a loss of 9 grams over 40 minutes, and that is per 14,700 millimetres squared. And we get the 14,700 millimetres squared, this value here, from 17.5 times 17.5 times 6 times 8. Okay, so times 6 because there's 6 sides, and then times 8 because there's 8 smaller cubes. So we're going to take this information and then use it 
to calculate the difference between A and B. So if we just jot down our calculations here, and A is a loss of five grams in 40 minutes with the given surface area, but it does ask us per millimeter squared per minute. So if we divide by five, uh, sorry, if we divide by 40, we get two per minute. And if we divide by 7,350, we get two per millimeter squared. And that will give us a value of 1.7 times 10 to the power minus five grams per minute per millimeter squared. If we do the same for B, well, we know there's a loss of nine grams in 40 minutes, but that's over a bigger surface area collectively with the eight smaller cubes. If we divide by 40, we're going to get two per minute. And if we divide by the surface area, we're going to get two per millimeter squared. So that will give us a value of 1.53 times 10 to the power minus five uh, grams lost per minute per millimeter squared. Now the question says, is the rate of osmosis different between A and B during this time, 40 minutes? Well, we can see if we compare the two values, 1.7 times 10 to the power minus five versus 1.53 times 10 to the power minus five, you can actually say in your answer, like we'll see in a moment, uh, yes or no. So you could say, yes, there is a difference and it's a small difference and you can state what the difference is. Or you could say there isn't really much of a difference because these two values, these two rates are actually very similar. So this is the official mark scheme then for question 2.2. And again, it does say you can have yes or you can have no. There's no mark for stating yes or no. And all the marks come from the values that you're going to use in your explanation. So if you had values of 1.6 to 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 5 for experiment A and 1.5 to 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 5 for experiment B, remember our figures were 1.7 at the top and 1.53 at the bottom. So anything between these values that I've got in green is acceptable. Um, that will get you three out of three. Okay, and then we need to look at other ideas that are accepted. So for one mark, uh, for calculation of surface area of two cubes, okay, as long as the surface areas were correct, that's one mark if you didn't quite work out the rate per minute per gram. Also, it allows us one mark for calculating both the rate of osmosis in the first 40 minutes. Okay, so 0.12 and 0.13 and 0.22 and 0.23. So that would be worth one mark. Now it says at the bottom, if the surface area and or the rate of osmosis is not correct, then they still would allow one mark for the calculated rate. So if that's wrong, but you've taken your calculated rate and then divided that by a calculated surface area, then they'll give you one mark for that, even if the, the values that you've calculated for rate or surface area are not uh, correct.